here with, um, I look after sales, okay, worldwide. Um, Lim is our CTO, L-I-M, just call him Lim. And uh, we're going to show you the beast. And uh, I am the beast from the east, according to Eric. Anyway, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, what we're going to show you is really quite amazing. So, you better fasten your seatbelts. Already? Okay. So, is everything perfect today? We certainly saw some interesting things this morning. Some really cool graphics, some really cool tools, uh, some nice, um, exciting wireless stuff. And I can certainly see the attraction there in having more wireless and more graphics. But at the same time, it's probably quite confusing for everybody as well. And uh, we're going to try and simplify that a little bit for you. So wh where's it all headed? What's happening today in the industry? Well, it's certainly um, smartphones are definitely influencing our daily lives. Everyone's got a smartphone here. Um, and I think one of the guys mentioned this morning also the kind of chips that are going in cell phones are also influencing this industry. So we're using processors that are in your cell phones. And the good thing about that is we're leveraging the cost, the low cost, and also the time to market. So what we're going to show you today is a very powerful DDC controller. In fact, to call it a DDC controller is probably wrong. Uh, we're going to talk about system architectures and how we're looking at collapsing system architectures. Out of interest, who's heard of the beast? My God, you need to be watching Control Talk more often and Control Trends, okay? So not many. Has anybody heard of EasyIO? Oh, hallelujah. Well, that's good. So that's good. Do you know, I've been traveling around the country the last few weeks, and a lot of people have heard of the beast, so uh, maybe we just need to reinforce it a little bit more here. Um, believe it or not, market opportunities are growing. And a lot of that, we owe that a lot of that to energy, or the, the requirement to save energy, or the need to save energy, and the need to get into all buildings, not just big buildings. Um, and I'm just going to flick through this quickly because I, I want Lim to show you the really exciting stuff and we only have a limited amount of time. But basically what I'm trying to say is the market's getting bigger, the controllers are getting more powerful, you're getting smarter, your customers are getting smarter, and we're leveraging the IT industry. Here's a very simple diagram of, I, I like to put the market in a triangle and if you look at the top end, they're the skyscrapers, but they seem to get the most attention. But actually, the skyscrapers are really a small part of the market. We all tend to live in, in this middle area here, doing const new construction, retrofits, energy projects. But very, very rarely do we get down to this bottom side. And a lot of that is to do with cost and simplicity. There's no point doing one small building, is there? You'll never make any money. But doing a thousand small buildings or a hundred small buildings is very attractive. So we're focusing very much on this bottom layer. Let me ask, anybody in this room thinks that we are trying to be a Jace? Good. <laughs> Please tell Tridium. They think we're trying to be a Jace. And we're one of their biggest customers. Believe it or not, we are one of the biggest customers in the world of Tridium. We have the EasyIO brand of Jaces. We have our own controllers, and we always use the Tridium Niagara Framework um, supervisors. In fact, Lim and I are both ex-Tridium, 10 years in Tridium together. Even though EasyIO has been going since year 2000, almost as long as Tridium. And in fact, we founded Tridium in Asia in the year 2000. We are not trying to be a Jace. We, nev we never will, we never intend to be. But what we do intend to do is go into the market where Jaces are too expensive. And I'm talking the Jace 1 market. Who's got a Jace 1? Any reason why there's no Jace 1? Can anybody tell me? seems a big need for it to me. Thousands, even millions of buildings need that solution. Millions. Probably bigger than the market today. Because the Niagara framework cannot fit in a small chip. It's a big Java application. 
if it was possible, it would have been done. So what Brian Frank did, Brian Frank was the guy who wrote the AX software. He also wrote a, a, um, a framework called Sedona. And it's not a cut down version of Niagara, it's something different, but it uses the same tools. So from Workbench, you can engineer these solutions that we're about to show you. So we're not a Jace. <laughs> okay, what's really unique about the beast? And to see one, it's here. One is power, it has two processors. And you think, why would you need two processors in this simple device? Well, the reason, there's a lot of reasons. One, it's very powerful. We can run multi-protocols in this box. We've got a web server running. We've got SQL Lite. We've got SSL. We've got web services. We can connect to the cloud even without a fixed IP address. We can send information to SkySpark. We can bring wireless sensors in through our RS-45 ports. We can send information to DG Lux for a really nice graphical system. We also have our own graphics in here, but that's intended for the, at the site level. We also have a very simple touchscreen interface that can be used with JCs and can be used with this and can be used with supervisors and you can see that outside and we'll also, in fact there it is there. There's just so much to cover in such a short period of time. But anyway, one is power. The next one we've got an SD card in here. We can have up to 16 gigabytes in here. Why would we have an SD card in here? Small pack and big savings. What are you going to put on the SD card? Perfect. What would you put on the SD card? Graphics. Trending. Yeah. You could put years of information on here. Years, and I'm not exaggerating. One gigabyte is how many records, Lim? One gigabyte? So we've got 16, right? So one million records. So 10 million, did you say? One million. 10 million records on one gigabyte in here. Shit. Shit, it's true, Eric, it's true. <laughs> Graphics. Now. Here's a controversial subject. I saw a few heads turn there. What about the electrician's controller? Now I'm not suggesting for one minute that electricians are going to do your job. But what I am suggesting is to get to those small buildings, we might need the electrician to install this controller. So what we've done is we've built an interface to this where you can keep every application you will ever use stored on the SD card and the controller can reprogram itself from a web browser. And using one of these little um, wireless routers, you're going to love these after today, and I'm not selling them, but I just love them. That's a wireless router. You can put a 3, 4G stick in it, and it's 48 bucks. <laughs> Amazon. So you just go to site with that, you could even give it to the electrician, use the smartphone, we're at HTML5, we have a PHP server running in here. What is the point of having plugins? Plugins are dead. Why use Java? Why not just use what the internet's built on? PHP, HTML5. So yes, you can use an iPad. I'm going to get to item set 8, you'll also find that quite interesting. Okay, the price, for 32 points, just over 500 bucks contractor price. Of our existing controller, we already have 70,000 in the field worldwide. We are the big company in these controllers. Even though you might not know us that well, we are growing exponentially. We ship 2,000 boxes a month, and when we bring out this range, it will go up to 6,000 a month worldwide. Why? Because we're very good at what we do. We just do this. We don't try and do what DG Lux are doing. We don't try and do what Schneider are doing. We do this, and we do it really well. And we'll prove that to you in a moment. <clears throat> we support BACnet, TCOM, SOX, and Modbus. We've got two RS-45 ports, so you can have Modbus and BACnet on there. BACnet will come later this year. Our existing box has it, but we've decided just to delay BACnet a little bit because we're building a server and a client. So you're going to be able to add those um, MSTP wireless devices off here, your Modbus meters. So yes, there's some similarity with the Jace, but again, it's aimed at that lower market, that lower size building, the Jace 1 market. Okay, um, built-in applications. We have, we're building a community. Think of the Niagara framework at this level. We're building a Sedona network framework 
ecosystem, community. People are building apps for this already. Graphics, dashboarding systems. One, one of our customers is even putting a tenant billing system in here. Totally browser-based HTML5. We don't want you to have special tools. We want you to use Workbench if you've got it. That will do most things. And then after that, in item 8, I'm going to talk about some other tools that are coming available. Um, so I talked about the fills the gap in the market. There is a huge gap in that market down at the bottom end. Huge. But the prohibiting factor is the installation and the programming. If we can do that more easily with applications on the SD card, using tools that you use today, and you do all the clever stuff remotely, then you can do a lot more work. So the, and uh, open web server, I've talked about all that, and iPad friendly as well. I know a lot of people use iPads, I do. Um, choice of three tools. Our number one tool is Workbench, always will be. We love Workbench. Please tell Tridium that as well. We love Workbench. It's the best out there. But there's one problem with it. The whole world does not use it. Maybe 50% don't use Workbench, maybe higher. So we're just going to ignore that market and say, hey, you know, we only use Workbench, so uh, you guys, I'm sorry, we can't do business with you. Well, that wouldn't be very good to our end users, would it? So we, in this community, what we've done is we've created, we've en encouraged people to start creating new tools. But again, not to lock you in. There's one that doesn't even require a license called CPT, which we're going to show you. You can still use Workbench, you're not locked out. If you've got Workbench, someone does it with CPT, you can still use Workbench. But if you've got someone who doesn't use Workbench, they can use CPT. And it can be stored on the SD card without any installation on your PC. It's just an exe file. And it's awesome, so we'll show that to you. There's another one coming out of Australia that's totally browser-based, totally web-based. So the, the tool is in the controller. They embed it in the controller on a license basis. So from your iPad, you could be doing wire sheets, programming this controller. And again, when it's saved, you can still use Workbench or CPT. So isn't that choice? We all want choice, but we don't want more tools if we can avoid it. So if you've got Workbench, you don't need those other tools. But if you don't have Workbench, you need those other tools. So best of both worlds. The beast. So what's all the fuss about? Actually, a lot of people are talking about this controller. Um, <coughs> the price, the points. You want to link them together? We have Sedona objects. Lynn's going to talk about, a little bit about Sedona for those of you who don't know what Sedona is. We've got client server objects. We can run between controllers over IP. So it doesn't have to be just a small system. You can easily link controllers together. We also have some smaller controls you can hang below here using BACnet or Modbus and program them with Workbench as well. We, we don't want you to have more tools. You've got enough tools already. Two processors makes it very powerful. Um, it's powered by open source. We're even thinking of calling this controller the controller of open source, powered by open source. Open source is more secure than proprietary. That might sound like an oxymoron, but it's not. Anybody heard of Linux? Anybody using Linux? I guarantee everybody's using Linux. You just don't know you are. The set-top box, all kinds of stuff like that are using Linux. We're using Linux. We're using an open source web server. PHP, the internet's built on PHP. Couldn't be any more open. The graphics, we're using um, standard libraries. Now, these are not DG Lux style graphics. These are graphics that you could have at a local site level. At the enterprise level, you go for something else. But if you just want simple graphics out of the box, get your foot in the door, do that building, very low cost, very easy, and then upsell afterwards, do all the integration, do all the enterprise stuff, and link all those buildings together. To me, that's smart grid. We're already doing projects with uh, power companies where they want to send an REST protocol and look at the load demand, switch on power generation. We're already doing that. So that can all be done from this controller as well. That's why we need OpenSSL to make it secure. 
Okay. Graphics. This is what our graphics are going to look like. The graphics won't be released until early August. They're free. They're included. Some projects we've already done. Um, that's a, a big heat pump system. You can see the peer-to-peer -peer controllers in the panel all talking to each other. They look great. There's a close-up. This is one in Holland. This is one in Australia. I think you'd agree they look quite smart. We're looking, uh, we've got apps now also taking the device, sorry, directly to enterprise. So what does that mean? You've got that whole middle layer today we have to worry about. It's not necessary sometimes when you just want to do energy services. Here's my prediction. Smartphones are here to stay. Smart services are here to stay. If we don't embrace them, they will swallow us up. Quick question for you. When you said that the controllers, they communicate with each other, do you yeah. mean that, that it's a peer-to-peer, -peer, true peer-to-peer, -peer, and that they can actually share sensors for Correct. Control? Correct. Okay. At the IP level. IP level. Has to be IP level. So I'm saying let's, exp let's, let's embrace this and let's go for the exponential growth. And let me show you now in a system diagram, what I mean by device to enterprise is DDC up to the supervisor or the enterprise. What I'm saying is on small buildings, you don't need all those layers because we've got the power in here now. Why have we got the power? Two reasons, well three reasons. One is the processors we can get now at a reasonable price. Two is the open source stuff that's available, which is awesome out there. And thirdly, <coughs> thirdly, we've got the web servers, we've got the connectivity. You know, the area controller is really there to supervise lots of controllers. But now with the Sedona framework, we can do all that in here. But the key again is the tool. The tool is always the key. We don't want you to learn new tools. And even the tools we're going to show you that are optional for non-Niagara customers, you can learn in 30 minutes. And you can test me on that. Here's some of the dashboard systems that are out there. This is a free one where you can actually take an easy I.O. and go directly to an, inter to a, sorry, a, an internet based dashboard system. This one's called Exosite. Very good for proof of concept. I'm not suggesting you would sell this commercially, but very good for proof of concept. You can even do it from your home because you don't need a fixed IP address in here. We can push data up to the cloud. So we don't need to worry about firewalls either. So let's just go through the controls. I'm going to wrap this up in five minutes because I want to get onto the interesting stuff where seeing is believing. So this is the beast, the FG32. This is what it looks like inside. We've got two processors, the ARM9 is here, there's an M3 Cortex running the I.O. We've got 16 universal inputs here, you've got an Ethernet port of course, we've got a USB port here, talk about that later. All those 16 inputs can count pulses at 20 hertz. We've got 12-bit A to D converters in there, and using some math we get that to 16-bit. That means we can cover a wide range of inputs and different sensors. All the Sedona objects inside take care of the curves, take care of the logic, and that's what Lim's going to show you. Uh, on the outputs, we've got eight digital outputs, but we've got eight universal outputs. So one's current, one's voltage. There's a third one. We've got an open collector circuit where we can actually switch a relay. 24 volt DC, 200 milliamps. It's not a triac. And then in the top left hand corner, two RS-45 ports. One will be for BACnet MSTP, one will be for Modbus. And in the future, we may even add things like Traincom 4 and things like that. What about LON? LON, I know it's not dying here, but everywhere I visit, it's dying. In the BMS world. It's going up in the metering world. Now, I'm not saying there aren't LON devices out there. There are. But I just can't see it. That's my personal opinion. I just can't see it getting there. I see that opinion. It's just too proprietary. You all think it's open, right? There's nothing open about it. It's hell to deal with. With the transceivers and things. I like LON, actually. I actually like the way it works in a standalone way. What I don't like is it's just hard to deal with. 
as we move forward in this IP, IT world. I don't want to put an ILON in to make it IP based. So we have a great solution today, a Jace. So you'll pay a little bit of a premium if you've got LON because on a small building you may have to buy the Jace. There's the spec, I'll go through that quickly, no, not much point spending too much time on that. We also have a new power supply, you can see that out there. It's uh, 72 watts with three 1 amp outputs. The first one can be 15 volts DIC to power the area controller. Uh, why would we make a power supply? Because power supplies are really important, that's why. Uh, it's inexpensive and it's, high, and it's very high quality and you'll see one outside. Um, we've got the FG20, which is the smaller beast. That's a big beast. This is a 20-point beast. Same power, just less money. So this takes you under 500 bucks. And we've got a thing called an FC20. Now, you all know what FG stands for, right? G stands for good. It's the honest truth. C stands for competitive. So you've got that building, you've got the rooftop units. Let's say you do want to link your rooftop units to the FG. You can now do that with back to MSTP or Modbus. And you can program them with Workbench. You can program those backnet controllers on the rooftop units with Workbench. Got it? <laughs> That's a big deal. The biggest complaint we get is about tools. We don't want any more tools. Thank you very much. We're quite happy with the ones we've got. Aren't we? You all happy with the tools you've got? Yes, no? We Slop. Keep them long enough, they keep changing. <laughs> ah, so I'm going to show you some other ones today that don't have a license. Would that be nice? And I make zero dollars from saying that. Zero. They're not from us. We do what we do best, and that's this but we are creating that ecosystem of people who think like you. They want to be open, they want to be free. Set me free. <laughs> VAV controller. This is one of the uh, tools I'm talking about. I can teach you to use that in 30 minutes and I'm willing to take the challenge anytime today. Got this screen, the screen is awesome, this little screen. Screens. What's the biggest problem with touch screens? I mean, screens to work with your BAS. Huh? Expensive. I, I agree with that. Anything else? Cumbersome to set up. Yes. Is there a good one that solves all those problems? You're looking at it. No programming. The only setup you need to put in there is your IP address. It's IP based. It works with these or any other Sedona controller. It works with a Jace and it works with a supervisor. Why are you laughing? Works with the Jeff. Yeah. Huh? Jeff just got excited. He got excited by it. Well, I'm pleased about that. Does it come bigger than that? Though? No. That's what she said. You know why? <laughs> you know why? You know why it doesn't come bigger? No. No reason. No. The reason is we will never satisfy everybody. This is intended to be simple. Put it in an office space, put it in a plant room. I don't have time. I don't want to steal his thunder. Keep it simple. When you use it, you'll realize it's okay. But anyway, having said that, with this you can use your iPhone. You don't even need that. The reason you need that is in a boiler house where someone physically wants a very simple interface to be able to change set points, read values. You're going to have the best of both worlds, especially if you have that wireless router. So being that it's IP based, you can access more than one of these? 18. 18. A mix of any. Jace, Easy I.O. Supervisor. Any mixture up to 18. So if you had, if you had 20, then you just need two of these? If you had, if you had yeah, you just get two. You can keep adding them in, okay. Yeah. Yeah. The other nice thing about these routers, when you're working on a panel, you can go sit in the aircon office away from the noise and just plug that into the easy I.O. What, what's, the, what's that cost, roughly? Which one? The screen's around 500. Okay. Eric's got one out there. I saw one on the wall out there. So take a look. Right, Lim, over to you. I'm not, oh, one last thing. And it's so easy. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> Says it all, right? A customer sent me that. It's not my daughter. Lim, over to you. Sorry for stealing all that time. 
If you need to control it or measure it, Stromquist and Company has a control solution for you. With over $2 million of inventory between our Georgia and Florida locations, an easy to use online ordering platform, same day shipping, and a factory trained team of controls experts to answer your questions, Stromquist and Company continues in its tradition of offering great service and great products.